Hi friends, welcome to Centum Academy. So as you all know that in this series we are discussing about Indian Constitution. So in this video I am going to discuss about making of Indian Constitution. So uh, let me tell you what all I am going to discuss in this video. So uh, I would be discussing about composition of Constituents Assembly and then working of Constituents Assembly and different committees which were formed for drafting of Constitution and the enforcement of Indian Constitution. So different dates and uh, related stuffs I would be discussing in this video. So uh, let me start with a brief idea about uh, how the demand for Constitution came into picture in complete freedom struggle. So uh, actually to govern any territory uh, you need a stand standardized set of administrative procedures and they are needed because you need to give structures and you need to formulate few rules and regulation for different bodies which are used in administration so for that matter if i give an example so uh, there has to be a definite set of pattern in which government need to be formed then judicial structure needs to be there civil administration structure needs to be there their functioning needs to be defined their area of responsibility needs to be defined and a lot of different other things need to be inculcated in the set of procedure needed to govern any particular territory. That was done by Britishers by bringing different regulating acts from 1773 to 1935. They brought nearly around 11 regulating acts from 1773 to 1935. So then why did Indians started demanding constitution and, and subse subsequently cons constituents assembly. So Indians started demanding for constitution because they first they wanted that India to be free and when India gets freedom they wanted self-regulating rules by which they, they are able to govern their own country. Now the first demand for uh, Indian constitution came in 1934. Uh, by a communist leader M. N. Roy and Congress demanded it for the very first time in 1935. The demand from the Congress was reiterated again in 1938 by uh, Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru. Now though Indians were demanded uh, the drafting of Indian constitution, Britishers were not uh, uh, giving a chance or were not listening to the demands made by Indian freedom strugglers. The first time they accepted this demand was in 1940 and that is known as August Offer. So August Offer is nothing but acceptance of demand of constitution for Indian people made by Indians. And for that in 1942 uh, a British Parliament member Stafford Cripps visited India in which he wanted to formulate uh, different structures in which Indian constitution needs to be drafted. So that went on for some time, uh, nearly three to four years that procedure went on. Finally in 1946 uh, by the mechanisms of cabinet commission, uh, procedures of formulating and drafting of Indian constitution were decided and on the same basis constituents assembly was formed in India, though at that point of time India was not independent, so uh, Constituents Assembly was formed and uh, drafting of Indian Constitution began. Then one thing which we need to be very clear over here is that by cab, uh, mechanism of cabinet mission, in they did not allow two Constituents Assembly for India and Pakistan. They said that India would remain a single nation and a single constituent assembly would be formed uh, which would draft constitu constitution for complete India and India is not to be divided and because of this the recommendations of cabinet mission was not accepted by the Muslim League and they most of the time they boycotted the meetings of constituents assembly and you will see later that how they affected the working of constituents assembly.
now let me take you through composition of constituents assembly but before that i want to tell you what is constituents assembly so wherever a uh, constituents assembly is there in front of you you should understand that it is a body or a assembly which which has popularly elected representatives and the purpose of this assembly is to draft and adopt constitution anywhere so as we are talking about indian constituents assembly it was created to draft and adopt constitution now we need to understand that how many people were there in indian constituents assembly so total number of members in indian constituents assembly was 389 now from where uh, did this 389 people came in constituents assembly so we need to understand the territorial division of india at the point when uh, constituents assembly was uh, created at that point of time there were three kind of territories so provincial assemblies were two types in which governor was head so this is about provincial assembly and chief commissioner was head so two types here in provincial assembly two categories head as go governor and head as chief commissioner and then there was there were princely states so out of total 389 292 seats were given to the provincial assemblies with governor four seats were given to provincial assemblies with chief commissioner as, as head and 93 seats were given to uh, princely states now in these provincial assemblies elections were held so members were elected how members were elected so members of legislative assembly of provincial assembly elected the members of constituents assembly based on religion based on different categorical uh, divisions in 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 indian society at that point of time so elections were done on the basis of population religious population and here in princely states the members were nominated so one thing is clear that the members in the constituents assembly were partly elected and partly nominated also one thing that we have to uh, care about here is that these 389 seats had provisions for members from all over india as muslim league boycotted constituents assembly proceedings hence the members of muslim leagues have to be neglected from here also because after independence they created their own constituents assembly in pakistan and those members not did not participate in indian constituents assembly also princely states uh, also boycotted the proceedings of constituents assembly so you will see later that out of 389 members only 211 members attended the meeting first meeting at 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 the time of 9th december 1946 when the first meeting of the constituents assembly was conducted so members attending the meetings of constituents assembly were much lesser than the total strength of constituents assembly now what are the different uh, workings of constituents assembly so as i already told on 9th december 1946 the first meeting was uh, conducted and at that point of time the oldest member of constituents assemblies mr uh, sachidanand sinha was elected the president of constituents assembly temporarily after that elections were held and mr rajender prasad who went on to become the first president of india became the president of constituents assembly and mr hc mukherjee became the vice president so mr prasad became the president and mr mukherjee became the vice president after elections now uh, as 
the information given by me muslim league boycotted because they want, always wanted separate nation and hence separate constituents assembly for them and there were only 211 members because of the boycott by the muslim league and the princely states now what happened in the first meeting of constituents assembly so this is important because a very important term comes into picture when we discuss the first meeting of constituents assembly so objective revolu uh, resolution was um, moved by mr jawaharlal nehru in constituents assembly on 13th december 1946 and this objective revolution focused on social economic and political justice for indian citizens and econo equality and fundamental freedoms to be provided also it set a few aspirations and values for the constitution makers so the people who were going to draft the indian constitution so it uh, set few set of rules aspiration and values so that they can work on that and draft the constitution now few of the points i would like to discuss about objective re resolution so uh, the first resolution which was made was to declare india independent sovereign republic and for this independent sovereign and republic india to draft a constitution then it was also given in objective re resolution that the power should be drawn from people of india so focus was people of india then it was also mentioned there that adequate safeguard to be given to minorities backward tribal areas and depressed and other backward class because of the op operations done on 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 them because of the sufferings uh, which they were going through it was decided that they have to be provided adequate safeguard to bring them out of all the sufferings that they were going through and also because india has a very historic uh, uh, india has been a very historic nation it has a history of last 5000 years or or perhaps uh, beyond that so it was decided that the ancient land which is india should attain its rightful and honored place in the world and uh, it should make its full and willing contribution for the promotion of world peace and welfare of mankind so these kind of points were uh, there in objective re uh, resolution we should also understand that this objective resolution along with few um, uh, changes here and there went on to become the preamble of indian constitution so the source of preamble of indian constitution is nothing but objective resolution moved by sri jawaharlal nehru on 13 december 1946 now to take care of different works of uh, constituents assembly different committees were formed so here i have tried to mention the important committees actually there were eight major committees and there were different other minor uh, committees so there were 15 minor committees and eight major committees so i have discussed here four committees so uh, union power committee and constitution committee uh, were headed by uh, shri jawaharlal nehru provincial committee which was responsible for uh, uh, having discussions with different provinces for them to be uh, taken into indian union was headed by sardar vallabhbhai patel so uh, uh, shri uh, uh, vallabhbhai patel headed the committee in which discussions went on with different province uh, uh, princely states in in which they were persuaded to join indian union then drafting committee which was the most important committee uh, over here i would say was headed by dr bhimrao ambedkar and this committee was responsible for drafting of indian constitution studying uh, different constitutions across the world and and making a constitution 
which is suitable as per the demands of India as a nation. So there were different members, actually seven members in, in a drafting committee. So Bhimrao Ambedkar, Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar was the chairman. Then we had uh, Mr. Gopala Swami Iyengar, Mr. Uh, Krishna Swami Ayer, Mr. K M Munshi, uh, then uh, Sayyad, Mr. Sayyad Muhammad Sadullah, then Mr. Madhva Rao, then Mr. T T Krishna Machari. These were the seven members of uh, uh, member of drafting committee. So uh, here only I would like to discuss with you uh, when we do the discussion about making of constitution. It is basically uh, not complete without mentioning Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar. So his footprints and his vision is completely visible on the Indian constitution where we as a citizen has been provided equality. Uh, we as a citizen have been provided different safeguards against the tyranny of the government executive and that is visible across the constitution and for that uh, looking has, at his immense contribution in, in, in making of Indian constitution Dr. Ambedkar is known as chief architect of Indian constitution and if you go through his different debates across the floor uh, on the floor of the assembly you, you will find that his logical forceful and persuasive arguments were able to uh, bring a lot of changes to uh, in, in the constitution he was able to hold on different uh, uh, points which he has thought to be included in Indian constitution. So his contribu con contributions are immense in drafting of uh, Indian constitution. Now if I talk about uh, adapting of Indian constitution, so the final drafts were introduced by Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar. If I talk about different readings of Indian constitution, there were three readings. Three times Indian con constitution was uh, read on the floor of the constituents assembly. First reading was a general reading. Second reading was clause to clause reading in which more than 7000 amendments were proposed. Out of that nearly 2700 uh, amendments were discussed in the parliament. And on the uh, at the end of the third reading on 26th November 1949 preamble was uh, constitution was adopted with one preamble, 395 uh, articles and 8 schedules. So uh, it was adopted on 26 November 1949 after the signature of the members present uh, in the constituents assembly. And on that day only few of the provisions, few of the articles of Indian constitution came into force. Uh, those articles were related to citizenship elections and provi provisional parliament. So you should not think that the complete constitution came into force on 26th January. It came in, few of the provisions came into force on 26th November 1949 only. But rest of the constitution came into force on 26 January 1950 and why we waited for exactly two months because 26 January 9, uh, uh, is, is known as uh, or very first time in 1930 on 26 January we celebrated first independence day and that happened because in the December session of uh, December 1929 session of Congress in Lahore first time Poon Swaraj was uh, demanded. So Poon Swaraj is nothing but uh, uh, self-determination. The, the right to self-determination was or self-administration was demanded and to commemorate that date of 26 January uh, uh, we decided that the constitution uh, should come in for uh, should come into force on 26 January 1950. Now uh, if I talk about few important facts out here, so if I told that 9th December 1946 was the first date of uh, meeting of constituents assembly and constitution was adopted on 26 November 1949. So if you look at this time period, total two years, 11 months and 18 days were spent in formulating of Indian constitution and this data is important because in most of the exams you will find that this question comes directly. Total money spent which is not that important at that point of time was uh, 64 lakhs. Uh, two, three other things uh, factual which are important is that national flag was adopted on 2nd July 1947 and uh, 
our national anthem jangan man was uh, adopted on 24th january 1950 and also during this time period of nearly 3 years there were 11 sessions of constituents assembly so uh, this is all from my side in uh, making of indian constitution uh, do like and subscribe the video and if you want us to make any video on any particular topic do let us know in the chat box we would be uploading that video on your demand do let us know in the chat box that what all things do you want us to include in this particular video or if there is something that i need to clarify so you will have your answers quickly thank you so much